we're analyzing Echo Petrol stock ticker EC to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Echo Petrol. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Echo Petrol for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand Echo Petrol stock performance. Echo Petrol trades for $10.91 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 42%. In the last five years, their stock price is down nearly 48%. In the last 10 years, their stock price is down 75%. Going back to when the business was publicly listed during the global financial crisis, Echo Petrol stock price is down 42%. They're declining at just under 4% annually. Currently, the company pays a significant dividend yield of 13.4%. That's dramatically above the dividend yield from an S&P 500 ETF right now. Their average dividend yield throughout this time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns in their stock price. Echo Petrol trades $2 above their 52-week low. The company is down $9 from their 52-week high. Echo Petrol is a large business. Their market cap is about $23 billion US dollars. Learning more, Echo Petrol SA is a vertically integrated oil company with operations in Latin America and the United States Gulf Coast. Based out of Colombia, the company explores, develops, and conducts production activities in various countries. Echo Petrol works as the primary operator or partner in a joint venture and a host of assets held onshore and offshore. Along with production, the company refines and markets crude oils and byproducts produced from its fields. Crude products are moved by Echo Petrol through a series of pipelines throughout Colombia, along with a network of third-party production centers and facilities. Echo Petrol SA was incorporated in 1948 and is based in Bogota, Colombia. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. There are two key reasons for this. The first is the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. The second is over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. These business returns will be captured here by return on capital. So by looking for this benchmark, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Echo Petrol as an integrated oil company is going to see that its returns on capital will fluctuate with the price of oil. That seems to be the case when we're looking at their return on capital numbers. They earned a low of 6.5% returns in 2020. Since then, as the price of oil has rebounded, their returns on capital have increased as well. Averaged out over these last five years, in a given year, Echo Petrol earns about an 18.5% average return on capital. That's several percentage points above our benchmark, and this is a strong check on metric number one. Next, for metric number two, we're taking a high-level look at the growth of their business. We want to see revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth in the last five years. This metric is all or nothing. All three of these have to be up for this to be a check. During this time, Echo Petrol has grown their revenues by 56%. Their net incomes have grown by 86%. However, their free cash flows have declined by 26%. Their free cash flows were negative in 2020. Looking at the company's cash flow statement, we can see two items contributed the biggest hits to their cash flows. This was a $5.9 billion change in their accounts receivable and nearly $1.5 billion of additional capital expenditures. So because of the decline in their free cash flows, this is an X on metric number two. Metric number three, we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in Echo Petrol. We just learned that their earnings have grown by 86%, and it seems like their shares outstanding are exactly flat in the last five years. So this is strong earnings per share growth for the business. Some of their per share information could be off here because we're looking at their ADR listing on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's something you'll want to be mindful of. Directionally, this should be correct though. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth in the last five years for Echo Petrol. Their shares outstanding are flat, and because their free cash flows are down during this time, this means their free cash flows per share have declined in the last five years. This is an X on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we are split evenly. We have two checks and two Xs for Echo Petrol. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced in their last five years. Echo Petrol has more than doubled their net debt position during this time. Currently, the business has $20.3 billion in net debt. And in the last five years, the company has produced $13.5 billion worth of free cash flow. This is potentially exacerbated by their negative cash flows in 2020. However, this is still 
well below the business's net debt position currently, meaning this is an X on metric number five, as it looks like the company is using more debt than what their free cash flows are able to support. And Echo Petrol's free cash flows have not rebounded to where they were in 2018 or 2019, even though the company has produced $3.2 billion in free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. Metric number six, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will provide a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it will offer a potential starting point for a fair value of Echo Petrol. Echo Petrol has a $50 billion total enterprise value. This takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, so it gives us a perspective of the economic reality of the company that's more similar to as if Echo Petrol were a private business. As we learned, in their last five years, the company produced $13.5 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, they produce about $2.7 billion worth of free cash flow. When we divide their $2.7 billion of their average free cash flow by their $50.5 billion total enterprise value, this gives us about a 5.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Echo Petrol. On a current basis, the company has produced $3.2 billion of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. When we divide that by their $50.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 6. 3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Echo Petrol. Both of these are coming in above that 5% risk premium we'd be seeking. So this is a check on metric number six. Just because this is the case doesn't mean you're running out and buying the business. This is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. It's not financial advice. You'll want to stick around as we perform our discounted cash flow analysis to come to a more concrete estimate of their intrinsic value before we give a final rating to the business. But first, we can't forget about our bonus metric. As our bonus, we're looking at Echo Petrol's dividend profile. Echo Petrol pays out a huge 13.4% dividend yield. That's a very high dividend yield compared to most businesses. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the fundamentals of a business to see if their dividends are sustainable or not. We want Echo Petrol to support their dividends with their free cash flows in the last five years. It looks like the company has done that in only two of these three years. The business has paid out both dividends and special dividends in four of these five years. It looks like Echo Petrol only supported their dividends in 2018 and 2019, and they have not supported their dividend payouts since 2020, even as the company's cash flows have returned to being positive. This could be skewed here because we're looking at their ADR listing. This should be directionally correct for the business. So while this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance, and it's no guarantee for the future, it doesn't look like Echo Petrol has been able to support their dividend payouts without relying on another financing source in addition to their cash flows. So this could be a potential concern, especially with a very high dividend yield for the business. You'd want to dig into this if you're interested in the company for its abilities to pay dividends. As promised, everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Echo Petrol, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Echo Petrol. A discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Just like any model in any discipline, its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of Echo Petrol's free cash flows, then using historical growth assumptions to project these into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework to figure out if these will be accurate and applicable going forward for Echo Petrol. If we assume that they keep their average free cash flows flat for the next 10 years, then in the 10 years from there that these would decline at 2% annually, adding in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of their tangible net worth. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements, at today's valuations of Echo Petrol, it looks like a potential fair intrinsic value for the company is around $15 per share. That's about $4 above the business's current stock price. There are some key factors to keep in mind here. Echo Petrol has had a low degree of business predictability in its past. This could throw off the assumptions we used for our model. This could be the case going into the future for the business. We would not be doubly counting their 13.4% dividend yield, which would make up the vast majority of this 15% rate of return. Because of that, it doesn't look like their stock price would be appreciating by that much, and the majority of this return would be coming from their dividend yield. Echo Petrol is also a commodity producer, so the business will tend to be cyclical in nature. Please do your own due diligence. Be aware that this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. Now it's time for a final rating of Echo Petrol. In analyzing Echo Petrol stock ticker EC, 
We learned the business earns above average returns on capital, even though they have been cyclical of about 18.5% in the last five years. The company has grown their revenues and their net incomes, but their free cash flows are down. It seems to be the case that their shares outstanding are flat. The company has more than doubled their net debt position, even as their free cash flows have declined. But on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flow to their enterprise value yield, that seems to give a potential attractive risk premium to the yield of the 10 year treasury. Looking at their dividends, Echo Petrol has only supported their dividend payouts in two of the last five years, and they have not supported their dividends since 2020. That's something to want to be mindful of as the business has that huge dividend yield. When we performed a discounted cash flow analysis of Echo Petro, if you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, from today's valuations of Echo Petro, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like an estimate of Echo Petro's fair value is around $15 per share. While that's a few dollars above their current stock price, you'll want to be mindful of those factors we mentioned. It's worth reiterating this is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals before making any sort of investment decision. You'll want to be mindful of potential risks that this business faces as an ADR and an overseas listing. With all of the factors of our analysis in mind, it looks like Echo Petrol is a strong candidate for further research. I'm happy to make an analysis of the business. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Echo Petrol with me and have a great day.